Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I am Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. And I'm very grateful to be in this nice air-cooled studio, even though it's freezing up wherever. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more miserable days. Uh, yep. Getting through the, the, yep. the hot and humid nights. Uh, it was well, you don't believe in AC? You one of those that won't have one in your house? You know, I don't do religion, so it's not a matter well, of believing or well, not believing. My ex is like but. that. He just can't <laughs> stand it. He says, yeah. I want that. I don't want it that dark. I, it was crazy, but I think his wife won out. Yeah. He I, said, I got the noisiest one I could. So yeah, I, don't, yeah I, I mean, I always feel a little uncomfortable in an air-conditioned room sleeping because I, I feel like I've been thrown into a refrigerator well, box. Well, but it, you put it on power saver. Mine only goes on, and, yeah, and then I have I a know. fan, too. I could not sleep I, at all if I did. I don't know how you did it. I, you know, anyway. It's, I'm, I'm a walking miracle. Well, you're crazy. What can I say? You're yeah. So, um, so, so we're, we're, we were going to, we were talking about the planning board. Yeah, so, and Saint actually, James let, actually let me, let me, yeah. at the risk of, being a little controversial about this. You be controversial? Well, you know, let's say sometimes I try and uh, yeah. steer away from it all. But yeah. why not? You know, somebody was saying, well, why didn't um, this was talking about this um, the St. James project? Which is, uh, people know, it's right uh, past. It's in Porter Square where the car wash is on the right. The and car wash is actually is part of the Street. property that was right. going to be turned into the housing as right. well as some of the and church it's property. St. James owns. They were trying to. Yeah, so it's it's sort of a comp right. it's a basically the lot where the car wash was, mm -hmm. as well as a little piece of the St. James. So right. St. James would benefit. Um, so every, right. every I think it, everybody most everybody would benefit, would benefit yeah. but some people may not like the fact that cars may exit the garage on one street or, or that there are cars. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so somebody said, well, you know, maybe they should have settled. With you know, with the neighbors, and somebody says, "Oh, there was no settlement." And then somebody says, "Oh, yes, there was." I have no oh, idea what it is. Oh, so that's what it was. Oh. Yeah, but the thing is, is, is that this whole business about doing a quote settlement with particular litigants mm. is a is a very very dicey subject in yeah. Cambridge, and yeah. and I, I could I could show you some people who get very angry at the very thought of it. One example is this. I'll give you two examples about why that's a really really bad place to go. One is um, is I think it was a two hundred Broadway. There was a oh, there was a know. there was a prop of an, an entity called NBC or Neighbors for a Better Community. Hmm. Basically, as part of a settlement to, to uh, you know, there was a zoning petition. I think it was called the Carroll petition. Hmm. Uh, and um, so they said, okay, we'll back off from the petition. We'll make they made a settlement. So a certain amount of money from the person who was developing the property was put into a fund. And then a group of individuals was put in charge of this fund. They came, called themselves Neighbors for a Better Community. So they dealt NBC. directly with the neighbors and not they didn't have to deal with the city because right. it was a private deal. So then deal. It, was, it was an understanding then oh. that this NBC group was supposed to use it. They actually got a little piece of property. Wow. And they had a kitty, some dollars to work with. Huh. And one individual, and I'm not going to name the names no, now, don't, but one don't individual... Do that. Uh, and the family of the individual ended up having control over this fund crazy. and the property, and they paid themselves as executive oh, directors dear. to do this. And it was only uh, finally resolved when, in fact, uh, after some time, the property got sold with conditions to, and Sean Hope, who developed it as a uh, housing, it's right down there. Uh, huh. in that, on that property. Yeah. So that opened maybe within the past year. And that's all allowed, that kind right. of situation. So that was like a 20, well, I don't know about 20, but at least a 15-year nonsense hmm. of a complete misappropriation of everything. It, it was not how any public process should ever work. Oh. Hmm. Right. And another one was, you see, now the, the developer of the St. James Project was Oak Tree Development. Mm -hmm. Some years ago, I think it was like either late 90s or around the year 2000, I couldn't say for sure, there was some, it just happened to be the same people who were opposed to the development of a housing development in LA, right across, directly across from the LRT Same station. people that are the St. James complainers? Some right. of them are okay. exactly the same All right. people. So they were opposed and, to a development? Right, and, I, and I'm gonna say, I, I will name one name here, which is not of one of the bad guys, but one of the good guys. So one of the principals of Oak Tree was a woman named Gwen Noyce. Mm. And Gwen was a big, and is, a big proponent of transit-oriented development. Mm -hmm. And she was so before it was fashionable. Mm. 
even when this Cambridge was putting together the uh, sort toward a sustainable Cambridge, the growth policy document, mm -hmm. which dates back to I think about 1993, she wow. was on the committee promoting that. Wow. And she married Art Klipfeld, who's a developer, mm -hmm. and they actually built co-housing projects. Oh, that's what, of course. Right. Which is up in. Like it was a uh, cornerstone. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And they live in it. Yeah, <laughs> they actually right. live in co-housing. These are not yeah. like going out yeah. to the it's suburbs not, it's not and Lexington. Cheap, but it's, it's no, nice. it's not. No, co-housing is right. not cheap. No. But the thing is, is it's but a. But they it's stayed and they model. built something because there's they stayed two. They, so two they in really Cambridge believe actually. in it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they wanted to do the same thing with uh, transit-oriented development and building housing, mm -hmm. residential housing in Porter Square. So, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, what happened with Alewife was that you know there were people just trying to block that project, and um, and. Then, unfortunately, just when they th you thought it was going to move forward, they found that there had been from a previous use there, I think it was something, I could have this a little wrong, it was like some fuel oil or something was found on the well, property. Well, said whole area was questionable. So then next thing, they're like, oh boy, yet another grounds for lawsuits. Oh, oh right. So they said, look, I tell you what. Um, I Who think, said that, Oak Tree? Yeah. Gwen, was she was active with the restoration of Blair Pond, so that she offered, yeah. and she was actually sat on the Affordable Housing Trust. Yeah. So offered to mm -hmm. put in $60,000 to the Affordable Housing Trust, and 135000 I believe, was the number toward the Mystic River Watershed Association, basically for, you know, you so if there's As a mitigation. Good, yeah, basically said, it's yeah. an active, you know, sort of a yeah. good faith gesture. She didn't gesture. have to, but she... Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and anyway, so uh, in the end, uh, I think, I'm not quite sure of the chronology here, but um, what happened was that apparently was unacceptable Unacceptable. And there was, so they were still getting hit with these lawsuits. So they filed what they call a slap suit. Slap suit is a ah. literally is a way of saying this was. Yeah. You're, somebody's filing lawsuits pretty much to just harass us. Right. Well, okay, you do that, then that's like completely putting gasoline on the fire. Yeah. And then the only way they got out of this dilemma was basically to take the hundred ninety-five thousand total, and basically assign it to thirty. 13 individuals who I will not name um, who would basically Same deal control like that the $195,000. Wow. So it wasn't being given to the city. It didn't go to the Affordable Housing Trust. But it why, didn't go why to the did Mystic they want it to go to individuals rather than to because the Because that's team. the way to get them to back off of their lawsuits. You mean it went to the individuals that were complaining? Yes. And, what? The, and people were irate about I it. I thought that should be illegal. It's like. It sounds like, uh, what do you call it, the payola, something. The city didn't initiate the lawsuit. It was individuals who initiated the lawsuit. Basically, they took a settlement, and then they used that money to and file further lawsuits in the future what? years elsewhere. So, you mean, yeah, no, but who controlled that money? Was uh, it? The 13 individuals, in theory, all right? Um, but, you know, there were... Let's not go is too the much money, down this Is road. the money still around? No, it's all... I think it was... Who gets the I money? I think it was all spent at some point. They had a requirement to give some annual tallying about it. Uh, and I don't know how it all got resolved. I, I eventually sort of lost interest in it. But what I don't get is when you settle with individuals, why are you giving them money to pay them off or to have them use it for some other purpose? I don't there get There was it. an understanding that the money was supposed to be used for housing and environmental purposes. But that's what the original thing was. For right. <laughs> so why wouldn't it simply go oh, to the places yeah. where it was guaranteed to go to affordable housing? So did the thing ever get built? Uh, yes, was. it got built, and Where it's there. It? Oh, it's right across the street from the LOFT station. Oh, is but it the one thing of those is, is that buildings? they could simply couldn't afford the delay. So you pay you people know, off. Time seems, is money. Seems to me that right. that shouldn't be allowed anymore. I don't think it should be allowed, but I don't you know. You think that, it still is? Because I don't hear I, those deals anymore. You know, the, Do you? The th well, I think it's because you, you haven't cleaned your own zoning. If you I don't know. if you try to do a payoff like that today. Then other property owners, business owners, are be, will be again irate because they say you're setting a horrible precedent. But it seems to me there should be something legally about that that you cannot do that. But I guess if it's you a know, private development, um, I don't know. Maybe so. All right. Sounds but, bad. So anyway, there is a problem though. Let's, let's be clear about when you have a project that people want to do, their financing is in place. Delay is costly. So sometimes people just do delay just for the sake of doing delay. Right. Well, I hope that it's doesn't happen thing. with this St. James thing. <coughs> I don't think it will. I think the planning board members But wait, are, it's the same principles. It's Gwen Noyes? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. and Oak Tree Development. So the thing is, is, is the, um, 
the planning board, I think, is, they issued permits, like special permits that were at the time. This is like 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, now they basically they've um, uh, filed for an extension because otherwise the permits could expire. Right. right. So it's a completely reasonable request. And considering the fact that the sole reason for the delay was the litigation, it would be just ridiculous to not you grant just, the you extension. You can't hold these develop yeah, yeah. hostage to a yeah. few... I, th I feel the same way. And, you know, and l listen, I, I could one day, maybe one day, I'll be a person who's trying to stop something and I'll be bothered. But the but thing is, is once yeah. it's adjudicated, once it's settled, you just got to live with it. You have to it. look at who the, it's a church that wants to remain I know, involved in I the know, community. I what, know, what is wrong? I know, I know. It's been a blight, that, that has car been a wash blight, thing. Yeah. I mean, right. I'm sure there'd be a lot less cars going out of there than went into a car wash when it was operating, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know. A car wash, know. the whole business is having cars move but in and out. But the car wash was all off of Mass Ave. So, oh, so I think please. We'll, have, we'll be either off of Beach People Street or the People aren't even buying cars day. anymore. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, yeah. if you wanted to renegotiate anything at St. James, yeah. you might actually say, well, you know, the new standard is we don't even require so much parking. So, Well, that's true. Would, there could so be put in other I, I have no idea housing, how many but, yeah, listen, If they want to do that on their own, that's great. Yeah. But uh, honestly, a deal's a deal. Oh. Just live with the deal. Hopefully they'll do the right, right. thing. Now here's a, there's another one here having to do with the EMF building. Okay, and that's news to me. Where did you hear yeah, about so this? Let's scroll down here. I'll yeah. sort of show some pictures here. So, um, is this is this been brought by uh, <coughs> all uh, right, so, the individuals? Yeah. All right, so you know we've actually talked on this program yes. before about um, the EMF building on Brookline Street, mm -hmm. which is was housing a lot of musicians primarily, artists mm -hmm. and musicians, but I think it was primarily musicians. Yes, there was recording studios in there, there were various things, but it's really a, it's a use that's existed maybe the last ten or twelve years, at least, right? But then in the last couple of years, the property was sold. It had been mm -hmm. on the market for a long time, and it finally got sold. Two years or so, yeah. And it was Trinity Properties, or, a, or an offshoot of Trinity Properties called Ledgemore LLC or something mm -hmm. like that, um, which whose principal owner is John DiGiovanni. Who's so that was two years ago, I think they bought it. I think it. about that's yeah, about right. Yeah, they've had two years. So it's turned into a big controversy, right? You know, so uh, they gave so them notice. They gave them notice. The city intervened. Got they a little extended bit of a delay, about a month. Yeah. whatever you know. But there's all sorts of crap going on. Let's now just where, show where it is. Yeah. So anyway, for those who've never actually seen on it, Brookline you should. Street. Probably the single most distinctive thing this is, is the approaching big going sign. up Brookline um, towards, Central, towards Central, Square. Central Square. This is sort of in the looking, front of it, although looking straight this at the front entrance. Right. This is more the common. And then uh, over on the here. on the left side, as you face it, there's a what used to actually be a gas station. Uh, I think it actually they did general You're talking welding about in here? at one point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was actually add on. It was actually a separate. You're right. I think I took my car there. It's once a separate years address. Ago. Yeah. I actually my old VW Beetle. I actually had the front. Yeah, you're front right. Axle, it was a car the, uh, repair type thing. Yeah. The, uh, mm -hmm. the the towers that held the shock absorbers. So EMF is basically this building. Out. Then. I, this, I, this I had, is they did they welded my old Beetle Wait, there. Wait, but who uh, is this now? Part of EMF? Yeah. It's all part of it now. Oh, so okay. I forget the exact address, but the thing is, is that that's the EMF building. By the way, the picture on the right there is that's the, Central Square. That's the graffiti. Yes. That graffiti has been up there for at least a decade, probably a lot longer. What does it say? I thought it was Sims, it's but it isn't. It's five. and five. You'll find that oh. same tag along the Mass Pike out in. Oh, uh, do you know all this so. time I thought it said Sims, which used to be a department. Yeah, it was like a clothing store. Yeah, that's so funny, but that's yeah. ugly. That should be fixed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, actually, I think there was some move from the Central Square Business Association. They got permission there, yeah. to have some people go up there on the road. Because that's and, the same owner. And paint the, something the spectacular building, on that. Right? Yes, that's also Mars Nagel's property. So, so anyway, um, so speaking of kind of problematic properties. So uh, somebody's requesting landmark status for that? Yeah, so Give me a break. Come I think on. it's a little silly and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. It's not even that. But is it that it's, old? It's a 1920s era building. I'd say the sign is nice. <coughs> right. You could, you could landmark that, that EMS sign. <laughs> right. And well, I think all you, can really, all you can really landmark is the exterior anyway. Well, true. You know, you right. shell out a That's building true. in the interior. Right. But um, so what, anyway, anyway, the uh. eventual, I think some of the, the tenants were holding on, you know, they basically, so they somebody would hold on the fort so people need to go out shopping, they'd come back in, let somebody in. Is there anybody there still? <clears throat> I think the w oh. latest word is that the last of the tenants are, are out of there. So John DiGiovanni and, and his company has not yet stated what the plan, future plans of the right. building are. Right. 
I mean, I'm going to guess it would probably be some sort of housing because that's kind of what people are doing these days. Yeah, but it's And there's be, a lot of demand yeah, for it. I know. So I don't know, right? Um, he did create some kind of studio rental type place in Medford, right? That yes, was early on. Exactly. And he sort of saw exactly. that as a... So, yeah, so in sort of classic Cambridge style, um, so you, you try and, you know, you bring in City Hall, maybe you should, well, they haven't filed a zoning petition yet, so I guess maybe that'll happen, who knows. You mean people that want to <coughs> keep it as a... Yeah, but yeah, honestly, that's a, it's a fool's well, errand. Well, there is the arts want, overlay thing that's going to go Which is more central square, and it's not so and clear it doesn't that actually cover that this. far I think down. They said that right, so the thing is, is that it, if EMF did anything, yeah. It would be to, that it, it spurred a little bit of a movement now mm. to maybe create a central square arts overlay district. What right. exactly that means right. and whether that can deliver affordable space for right. musicians and recording right. studios to happen. It's I don't know. It's not happening right this second. It's but not it happening is, this It's going to go to ordinance or it's not even ready for that? Uh, We've had one committee meeting about it. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, they're just talking about it. They yeah. did, the mayor has appointed a, uh, oh, that, a mayor's that's right. arts task, task force chair. I don't chair. know if that's fully appointed yet. But no, it's not. They're, they're actually seeking members. If you're interested, hmm. apply. Contact okay. the mayor's office. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because it's not a, a city manager appointed board. It's actually a mayor's it's initiative. The mayor, and I think Alana Mall is, uh, is the chair. Is the chair. All right? So if you really hot to trot in this topic, yeah. get your ass down yeah. to the mayor's office right. and be on that. So that's a so something so I th I personally see this as an outgrowth of the EMF thing. Now, yeah, it was sort of happening independently. Can as I well, ask you something? I'm looking at the picture. Who owns this plot of land next to it? All right. So the, the property that's curious that that me. green space yeah, in front of right EMF there. is owned yeah. by the city of Cambridge. What? In fact, it abuts. If you go, you're kidding. If you wrap around behind it. Yeah. It actually goes into that big open space. Which I don't is a, get it. So why? So what? Isn't that give them a little leverage about something? Well, maybe, maybe, yeah. So they could sell that plot of land to him. Maybe. To. Honestly, in in this particular controversy, wow. I don't think anybody's going to sell them that. Well, they certainly unless, haven't done anything with it. Unless for a long they can time. leverage affordable housing or something like that. So. Yeah, well, we'll I mean, see. it's not that big, but it's <coughs> sizable. I've gone by that for years. Yeah, I, I actually, I asked John if he's... I didn't know um, that. Wow. Yes, I speak with John DiGiovanni. Oh, hate Robert, me. you speak with everybody. Love me, hate me. But, um, but you know, not watching when he comes back on when he comes back from <laughs> vacation, I'm going to actually ask him directly. So, so what are we going to do here, right? Yeah. But um, but anyway, so the, some uh, uh, 16 people, one of whom was Peter Valentine, um, signed a petition asking for landmarking of the EMF building. So that, it's not a zoning petition. It's not a zoning petition. What it's a it? landmarking petition, which would basically then give the historical commission a certain amount of say-so on So they then have to then the shell. review it. Right. And I, I think, again, I'm not a mind reader, mm -hmm. but I imagine the idea here was that the petition was said, if we constrain... The, the property owner to maintain the shell of the building just as it is, then he will have no choice somehow but to ah, maintain a use. You know, I'm looking at this thing and I don't see happening. it at all. It's it, it's it's had like additions to right. it. It's not even. Well, yeah. If you go down to the calendar oh, section here, you know, which is on this very page, or it's actually oh, yeah. on the Civic Journal page. Yeah. There's a link to um, the there's a recommendations from the historical commission staff about this. Oh, there the is? The Historical right Commission here. is Where meeting is this Thursday night, oh. August 9th, I think, um, to oh. take up the issue whether they should pursue a landmarking uh, study for this. So is that a public meeting? It is a public meeting. Wh where now, is that on your page? Um, yeah, there's actually a link at the very, very end. But um, uh, and, and actually, it's... Um, Oh, at the very no, 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 not, not the, the Civic Journal page, but uh, on the very edge of this end. one okay. just for this page here. calendar here? Yeah, you go all the way down. So the thing is, is that, you know, the, I got to you know, the oh. Cambridge Historical uh, Commission is one of yeah. my favorite entities. Mm -hmm. so when you ask them to look into something, they do these wonderful research projects. And if you go down in there, actually, there will be something for this one. Yeah. What are we looking at? Right, yeah, up, 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 up. Uh, under the the um, Cambridge Historical Commission, further up, a little bit up. Oh, right here. Yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Petition right. of register. Not the petition, but the staff, staff memo. memo. Okay. okay. So just to sort of just give a little t little itsy bitsy little taste. This okay. is why I love my, our Cambridge Historical Commission. 
So they, they come up on the report. So let's just sort of scroll down. It's interesting they're calling it 116 Brooklyn. I thought it was 125. <coughs> yeah. So there's a picture right. for this section up of Google. Oh, it's 120. Right? And it basically yeah. gives the whole narrative. It shows you yeah. the thing here. But one of the things that's I'll really really great yeah. about this, you know, and again, it's showing different shots. Oh, that's the different. Oh, yeah, okay. Different yeah. views of the, of the property. Yeah. Check you can kind going? of see the bulk of it back there. Yeah. Um, and, and then it shows, shows some of the history. I didn't know about this. Oh, that look this at was, this. 1934. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, know, you can read all about some of the, the history of the property and its use as a, uh, it was like a home goods store for yeah. electronics type of thing. They should have they, a nice plaque there. That's right. what they should have. Yeah, maybe so, right? But this is what I really like about the Historical Commission. Yeah, they They'll really actually research it. it. But yeah. I think in the end, they said, look, in the end, this is not a particularly So they've already made building. some judgment about yeah, this? Yeah, so this is actually what oh, the place this, no, looked this like is, this is interesting. once upon a time. Uh, you know, when it was selling appliances yeah, when and radios and Before and the 1950 edition. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of attractive, but they basically ruined yeah, they, it with all the Most of the glass. And all the glass is the gone. Glass been, You're most right. of it bricked, bricked over. Bricked over. So yeah, yeah. it's not historic so it's, anymore. No, it's it's largely been yeah. pretty much shot, right? Um, but the thing is, is that so so the Historical Commission then actually comes back with That a, was when I was born. <coughs> there you I, go. Don't mention it, but look at that. There we go. Good thing we right. turned away from that. Place, I know. Right? You can't tell. Yeah, yeah. You can't mm. know. Right, but right. Um, the historical commission basically is yeah. saying that, well, look, this has an interesting social history. The commission hasn't voted yet. They will maybe maybe vote on Thursday whether this is deserving of a, a landmark okay. study. Oh, but I would somehow please, be shocked no. if, in fact, they came they back with so any recommendation to, to actually yeah. landmark this. So I think there should be some kind of something uh, noting it right. as, as part of a tour or something. Yeah, I also think this is a bit of a fool's errand at this point because... First off, the property has been evacuated now anyway. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so th this is not really the place people should be looking for, for accommodating the artist and musician community. No. Right? <clears throat> to whatever degree you can do it in Cambridge. Maybe they could, I was dreaming about this today. I said, you know, there are these curious new uh, models for the way they do like works, uh, work bar. And there's another place, mm. is it called workspace or something? where it's like shared space where, you know, you sort of become like almost like a collective and you could do that. There's probably a way of using either in a new building or an existing I building. There might be places like that already. Right. Is that maker spaces, you think? Or, or things like that. Or artist asylum? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really think that it's instead of like. chasing this wild goose, yeah. the petitioners exactly. and maybe others should yeah work cooperatively with this mayor's task force uh, mm -hmm. on the arts overlay district to come up with some other solutions and, for artists and if and you spaces, can find yeah. a benefactor you know somebody with some pockets yeah who can basically you know wouldn't mind putting a little bit of money into something hopefully they wouldn't lose their shirt on it but where they might actually be able to just sort of own the property and actually have a kind of a shared yeah artist musician space um where you can actually have a recording studio that many people plug into yeah. and do that. You know, there are places, basement spaces, uh, you know, there are some big central square basements, for example, that are still there, yeah. you know. Actually, the one that Nadine Mazin had is still there. I don't know what's in there now, but um, the thing is there are spaces, and, and uh, maybe it's unaffordable, and maybe you can't make this work, but I, honestly... That's the, really the avenue that I think yeah. people ought to be pursuing rather than trying well, to do Well, maybe some of those retail spaces that we're talking yeah. about could be artist studios. Yeah, the, the landmarking you know? attempt here almost seems as an act of yeah. ven vengeance, quite honestly. <laughs> you know, And I don't really think the Historical Commission should be playing a party to that. So Wouldn't it be great, though, really, when you think about it, if you could just make uh, maybe not music, I don't know, something for, I mean, that was mainly I, musicians. It I, wasn't I, like you know, Maybe I'm just kids. an etern eternal optimist, but I just sort yeah. of think there are ways to make something good happen. No, I think it's all possible. Honestly. Right. By know. the way, one last little thing, just, you know, we only have a few minutes here, but the um, we talked a lot last week about this Nakagawa Brown petition about uh, citywide rezoning and climate change, yada, yada, yada. That was a yada, yada. chunk of the right. summer meeting. So there was this chance that somebody was going to file for reconsideration, right? Oh. And which would actually keep it alive. Which Until would, the next council right. meeting. And, um, but it turned out the only person who did file, somebody did file for reconsideration was, it was Quentin Zondervan. Yeah. But here's the deal, and again, just I'm being a little goofy here, don't mind me, but... Robert's Rules of Order, this, not this Robert, <laughs> that Robert, right? Last name. General Robert. 
um, basically says that you can file a reconsideration, but only if you were on, uh, voted on the prevailing side of a vote, not the defeated side of a vote. Oh, interesting. And Quentin Zondervan had voted in favor of passing to the second reason, which is was the, which losing, was the side. losing side. Yeah. So he was not eligible to file. Interesting. And nobody else filed reconsideration, so the matter is done. And he's told that, or he knows yes, that? Yes, he knows that. He knows that. This is actually one of those sort of strate uh, strategery things where, um, in fact, um, sometimes a, a person in Congress will actually vote in favor of something they oppose just to leave them themselves open the op option of filing reconsideration of a vote. Yeah. So it gives them time to sort of lobby others uh, to come around to their way of thinking. Hmm. So anyway, that's not how it played out. So, so there's a lot of things going on. You should go to... Uh, Robert's <coughs> civic calendar page. There's Definitely. meetings. There's um, the old time baseball. That's on next the week on Thursday. Yeah, well, we can mention that again. Right. Um, uh, actually, um, yeah, next Wednesday, August 15th, the Envision Cambridge Advisory Committee is having their next round. Uh, you know, I'm on that, so that's sort of a fun thing to happen. What is this? Wait, August 13th, there's a city to the discuss the city ordinance committee to discuss it. There's technology. A, there's a surveillance, a proposed oh, surveillance gosh. ordinance, right. and I think there is already there. I think yeah. there's some language in place to do it. So, and I think they they managed to with the city solicitors and the proponents and the yeah. ACLU folks, they managed to hammer out something everybody could live with. Mm. Which basically, you know, some people had concern that the police were going to be spying in on everybody, yeah, sure. but but everybody wanted to at least acknowledge that there are going to be some cir circumstances where you want the police to be able to do certain things, mm -hmm. and you don't want to tie their hands. Okay. There's and also some legal all right. facts. Also, if you haven't registered to vote and you want to vote in the September 4th primary, do it by August 15th. That's it. That's okay. right. You know, and, and September fourth uh, is the primary. We watched the Capuano Presley uh, debate that was on today at WBUR. It's all over their Facebook page go. and everything. All righty. See bye you bye. next week.